but which I always talk about. I'm sure everybody's heard it a million times, but here's a million and one. Efficiency, my favorite topic. So, the problems that we face today, the ecological problems, they're so much bigger than just climate change. We got the lungs of the, the Amazon jungle, the lungs of the planet being chopped down. We've got the acidification of the oceans. We've got tens of thousands of species going extinct due to habitat loss. The big problem that we have, as we all agree, is growth. Never-ending growth. More and more cars, more and more high-rises, more and more pretty much everything. Consumer goods up the yin-yang. And it doesn't matter if these are green aeroplanes or green cars or green consumer goods. The label green has become some tool to encourage us to buy more and feel good. <laughs> it's become a marketing tool. If we are going to deal with the problems of never-ending growth, we need to look at its impetus. And that impetus of growth, we can discuss it, is efficiency. Efficiency. The more efficient we become, the more we can produce and consume with less labor. This puts a mandate on the economy. Either we grow the economy and provide more jobs, or we're faced with a recession or unemployment. I want to talk, give some examples, some historical context into that. And I'm going to go back a little bit. OK, 1787. I know I keep bringing it up. James Hargreaves. He comes up with this marvelous, wondrous idea, the technological marvel of its day, the spinning jenny. What the spinning jenny did was it enabled people to spin yarn twice as fast, four times as fast, with half the amount of labor. What was the consequence? Well, the price of yarn dropped, and a lot of yarn spinners lost their jobs. This was pretty much the beginning of the Luddite movement. And they started smashing machines, and there were riots, and they even engaged the British Army. They even made it illegal. If you smashed a machine, that was the automatic death penalty. That's how serious it was. So what eventually got England out of its little textile uh, recession? Well, people started to consume more. While radical consumerist ideas such as changing your underwear weekly started. Eventually, production, eventually consumption caught up with demand. You see, that's what efficiency does. It puts a mandate on the economy. The more efficient we make things, if we don't consume it, we'll end up in a recession. And this happens over and over and over again. So I'm going to jump a little forward, just put it in a little historical context. You probably all heard it before. Henry Ford. He comes up with the idea of the electrification of the assembly line. He doesn't come up with the idea of the assembly line. No, no, no. It was the electrification of the assembly line. And it, his output doubles triples, quadruples. He can produce more cars than anybody else with less labor. But he's kind of the boisterous chap. And he was rather proud of this idea. And he encouraged all the other industries in the United States, do the same. So you had uh, radios being made. You had uh, tractors being made. You had pretty much everything in the United States all on electrified assembly lines. The same thing happens with the American economy. It doubles, it quadruples, they can produce so much more. But what isn't happening is people were not consuming more. Our grandparents, or great-grandparents, or great-great-grandparents, were, they were kind of the, the frugal bunch. The spoons passed from daughter to daughter, and oh, this chest of drawers, oh, I carried it all the way from Lithuania. My great-great-grandmother used to own this. And they didn't really consume all the stuff that was being bought. Uh, the United States even had an uh, efficient electric tram system. They didn't even really need even all the cars that were being manufactured. Car sales were even on the decline. You see, the efficiency was the key reason why the American economy went into 
depression. They could produce so much more. But the people weren't buying the stuff. That was the fundamental reason of the Great Depression. Now, I want to give another example of efficiency. You see, I'm going to go to wood. Wood, that was the primary fuel source for a long, long time. What replaces it was coal. Coal was twice as efficient as wood and was so much more environmentally friendly. You didn't have to chop down all the forests, all that habitat loss. You didn't need it. You had coal. Coal was the green miracle of its heyday. Based on our definition of green, more efficient, uh, less environmental, coal was a green miracle. But what did it do? Well, the efficiency simply rebounded in growth. We could now do so much more. We could have steam engines, steam trains. We had the Industrial Revolution. Now, what replaced coal was petrol. Petrol, twice as efficient as coal, less sulfur, less mercury. Based on our definition of green, petrol is a green miracle over coal. But what's the consequence? It rebounds in growth. More and more cars, airplanes. The efficiency just lands up in more stuff. You see, that's what efficiency does. And it doesn't matter where that efficiency comes from. Now, this is the contentious point, and I hope people challenge it, me on it, that a more efficient efficient accounting system can be just as deadly to the environment as a car or a, uh, or a mine or, um, or, or an oil leak. Maybe not an oil leak. OK, that's excessive. <laughs> OK. But you see, because all efficiency really is about labor efficiency. And I hope somebody's going to challenge me on that. Now, how do we solve? this problem of efficiency. Well, how do we solve the problem of this impetus of growth? Now, there's lots and lots of ways it can be done. It's not that difficult once you understand the problem. Once the problem is defined, solutions become visible. There's one way. Um, Any time that what I call efficiency shifting. If you find ways to counterbalance the efficiency in the system with some form of more labor-intensive production, or more something that's more labor-intensive. An example, the healthcare system. Instead of treating people like they're in a production line, what about more people, more time, more caregivers? There's no rush. Education system. Instead of 35 kids in a class, why do we have more teachers? You see, you focus on the quality of life, things that improve the quality of life. They produce uh, more employment with less production. And the best, one of them all, organic farming. See, organic farming is extremely labor intensive. You need more people. It's not, you can't just cover your crops with pesticides. And you, need, uh, you need to take more time. There's more people involved. You're employing people, but your output isn't increasing. So those are what I see as some of the solutions. And I want to put them over here. And I hope somebody challenges me on some of those ideas. And also, there's lots of pens over here. So if you would like to write something on either this side or that side, all you do is say your name. It's a small group. Come on up. Because a lot of the ideas we're talking about, we're still defining. We're still learning about. If we can clear them in our minds, then we can start clearing them in other people's minds. The clarity has to begin somewhere. <laughs> It's part of a semantical thing, because um, if I equate efficiency <laughs> with clean underwear, then I like it. Oh, jeez. Like you have no respect for the Luddite movement. Clean underwear. <laughs> Radical. I haven't changed my underwear in we months. Have, we have to pick and choose uh, which kind of efficiency. Can't believe it. Bourgeois clean underwear. What's next? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to put I mean, you this. could say that it's more efficient to put a bunch of people on a field and then produce edible food that's full of nutrition than it is to load the field up with a bunch of pesticides and, and uh, um, uh, you know, um, fertilizers and, and do it with a tractor and, and two people. So, I mean, is, is it partly how we define efficiency? Though, right? Absolutely. Now, efficiency, 
I'm only defining in one context, which I believe is the only context, is a reduction of the amount of labor to produce something. You see, all efficiency really is about labor. Um, let me give you an example. But if you can't produce organic goods that with, with the mechanized stuff, then, then the most efficient way to do it is with all that labor. Would that meet your definition? Say that again. The only way to produce the organic goods is, is, is from using a lot of labor. So it's still the most efficient way to do it. And the only way to produce it is with a lot of labor. Sorry, go ahead. Maybe I'm... Yeah, uh, I think it's... Uh, yeah, it's not you're saying that, uh, <laughs> that you optimize the efficiency of organic farming by... Uh, I mean, it's a clear world. Well, I, I'm saying the most efficient way to grow potatoes is to use a big tractor and some fertilizer and some pesticides, okay? Mm -hmm. But that won't yield you edible organic potatoes. So the only way, therefore the most efficient way to grow organic potatoes is to do it through a lot of labor. Mm -hmm. So uh, um, uh, I w I, it, it sounded like you're... Um, definition almost precluded um, that or whatever. Um, um, I'll have to think about that one. What I'm really talking about is the efficiency in producing potatoes. Like an organic potato requires more labor than a steam-fed potato. I think the goal is not necessarily to produce more potatoes or more edible potatoes. The goal is to transfer the efficiency of work. Okay. Uh, and uh, like in, in one case, like the efficiency uh, in, in, uh, in energy and, and all that, like uh, reduce the amount of work that there is available, and people need to be employed to for living. And, uh, and uh, uh, on the other side, the, the, the amount of, of work needed is grow, and that's the, the inefficiency that uh, that counterbalance the loss of work on the other side. So I'm thinking that if somebody has a question, there's a small group, it'd be great to know everybody.